So welcome everyone. This is a special Baha'i blog interview. My name is Sanjel. I'm part of the Baha'i blog team and I'm really excited about this. I'm joined by Yvonne Mahotzi, Lorraine Cheryl Sheldon, and Dr. Mary Okonkwo. <laughs> the thing that ties us all together, I guess, is a project that we worked on many, many, many years ago called The Journey West. Baha'i Blog has been thinking about this year and how it's a special year as we commemorate the centenary of Abdul Baha's passing. And we've been thinking about projects that already exist online that are moving and powerful. And so the Journey West came to mind and we thought we would kind of bring it back up to the surface and we could get together since you guys are kind of the heart and soul of that project and talk a little bit about it. So maybe I will let you introduce yourself and then we'll move on to some other questions. Okay, I'll go first. I'm uh, Toya Mary Okonkwo and I was serving in Haifa um, from 2010 to 2012. And yeah, I was really honored and happy when Lorraine asked me to be part of this project. And so yeah, it was, it was great. It was a really um, blessed and beautiful experience putting, putting it all together as a podcast. It's just really cool. And you should mention like what you're doing now and like <laughs> accomplished. Yeah, okay. So yeah, actually just Friday I successfully defended my dissertation. And so I am gonna graduate in a couple of weeks with my PhD in English literature. And my focus is on um, like black girlhood, thinking about it globally, but also really locally specifically in um, there's a Fort Worth community where I grew up called Stop Six Texas. And so um, I wrote my own play actually um, and I use the metaphor of like the formation of stars, the collapsing of a star into a black hole, and then the creation of a quasar to think about black girls and black girlhood imagination and how it kind of can follow that same cycle. Um, even though like the part of being in a black hole is so difficult, which mm -hmm. is um, a lot of our present reality. So yeah, so that's brief, 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 <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I guess I'll jump in. So I'm, I'm Lorraine Sheldon. Uh, I'm pretty close to where Mary is. Uh, I work in Fort Worth, but I live in Middle Othean, Texas. And my current profession, I'm a community engagement librarian for a health science center. So it's basically where they train health professionals and I get the unique job of um, going out into the community, creating educational programs around health literacy and misinformation. We get to make technology and design beautiful things. So it was a real um, unique opportunity. I was really excited to, to join it. So, and uh, yeah, I mean, I in terms of my interests, I think I, still love design and media and I'm still editing videos and doing things like that. So it's, it's just such a useful skill. And I'm Ivan Mihotzi. I live in Zagreb, Croatia. And uh, I am uh, a filmmaker who specializes in sound. So I currently work as mostly as a sound recordist for, for film and television. Um, yeah, and that's the long and short of it, I guess. <laughs> That's great. I feel like, um, I mean, 10 years has passed since the journey was started. Um, but I think I'm going to personally say that I feel like those talents and capabilities that you brought to that project have since flourished and really blossomed since then. I feel like, Yvonne, I see your name on a lot of really cool initiatives. Your name is usually with special thanks. Um, and although we haven't seen each other in person, it's been really nice being able to follow, follow you all on, on social media and watch your achievements. Congratulations, Mary. That's really, that's really Thank wonderful. You. Thank you so much. Uh, I know it was 10 years ago, but I was wondering, Lorraine, if maybe you could bring us back to <laughs> where the idea for the Journey West came from and for maybe our viewers or readers who have never heard of it, maybe talk a little about what it is. Sure. Yeah, I think, you know, it was uh, around maybe end of 2010, um, we were coming up on 2011, which was like 
the the hundred year anniversary of Abdul Baha's travels to the West, and there was just such um, you know big focus. I know coming from the U.S. on uh, his his portion of his travels in the United States. And the thing is, like, he he visited Europe first, and I was like, oh, but like, we we can't miss out on uh, this like opportunity to explore that journey as well. I don't want to wait until 2012. Like, I want to I want to think about Abdul Baha now, and um, you know, it was just like the perfect storm of all of these amazingly talented people um, in a similar in the same place, and uh, you know, and it really. He, it's kind of like a body. You don't know when like your idea and other people's ideas begin and end because it's just, um, yeah, that's just how like the magic of collaboration is. And yeah, so it really like, it started with this desire to make sure that this story was told. And, um, you know, I, I had always loved, uh, you know, the radio, radio lab in terms of podcast and, uh, this American life. So the journey West is really modeled after that kind of model. And we really wanted it to focus not just on the history, but okay, this, these concepts are timeless and they're, they're current. So how can we also talk about how they can be applied in our lives? So, you know, we, we got to be creative and do kind of a story section, which was almost like making a mini drama online, which is my favorite part for sure. And then um, we had friends read the talk from that day. And then it's followed by, you know, another group of friends discussing what was what was discussed. And so, and thinking about it practically. And I think it's weird to have something come up that you made 10 years ago. I think as an artist, you're like, oh, okay, I'm done. Let me move on to this next thing. You never look back. So I think it just speaks to the timelessness of Abdul Baha's story and um, the concepts and how needed they are now. And it's such an exciting time to be in 2021 and have this other anniversary of Abdul Baha's passing and really to, to have that spiritual energy re-released in a way. And um, I can't wait to, to be creative again. So that was kind of how it started and um, Again, it's hard to say like what happened where, but it, it, it was so many people coming together. I remember um, you once asked me to read something. I think it was from May Maxwell. And I, I remember being really nervous and, and doing that in the sound booth. And Yvonne was like, it's okay. Like we're gonna edit this, it's gonna be okay. Um, but I remember then listening to the episode and just feeling like it was magical to hear that the effort that had been put into the full production with the sound effects, and interweaving the, the story with the talk that Abdul Baha gave and then the, the discussion. So I was wondering maybe if you could marry or Yvonne, if you could talk a little bit about that magic that went into the, the actual production of those podcast episodes. Mary, why don't you go ahead maybe with the, um, with the writing process and, and how you guys came about, you know, how, yeah. how that came together and maybe then we can. Okay, so yeah. Um, Lorraine and I would get together and just like brainstorm and I mean the imaginative process was really really cool because it was almost like you're reading these talks from the promulgation of universal peace and you're thinking about like um, how time was like society was 100 years ago but also how it is today and so like kind of imagining yourself kind of toggling between these two different time periods mm -hmm. because of course like Lorraine said there's a timelessness to Abdul Baha but not to the greater society in a sense and so that was that was really fun and I mean I don't know how many ideas got like kind of thrown out or you know like just it's just like yeah this really it was this really beautiful process of imagination and kind of being the narrators on the podcast like I don't know it just it felt really special and it felt um like we're lending our voice and like creating kind of this um it's not a pod I'm now only thinking of the word pod but it's like creating this like encasement um 
to also mark our moment in time um, as celebrating the centenary. And as we know, like this, there will be a bicentenary, <laughs> you know, there will be a tricentenary and there will be all of these things. And so like, while we didn't get to live in the time of the master to live at the moment of the centenary and to be serving, you know, within the vicinity of the shrine, it seemed like, yeah, it just seemed like a really beautiful moment to mark such a momentous occasion. Um, on my side, I, I, I was the one handling the, the editing and the little bits of sound design that are in there and the mix. Um, and it's funny from my side because I had just come to Haifa. I think I was there maybe 10 days. <laughs> when I had lunch with Lorraine, she was like, I have this idea for a podcast. And I love, I love radio. Even in college, we did a little bit of, of, of radio production. And I really loved that. And I was very excited about the opportunity to actually do these things and, and the story and the interviews and uh, the reading. Um, so yeah, I handled most of those things. And I remember um, the opening theme, which the, the, the music was, was done by someone else, but then, then building the sound design around it, the, this motif of travel and, and planes, trains, and automobiles, I guess, was, was the idea. And, and it was very uh, satisfying working on that because I could do, I had almost complete freedom in a way with a lot of, with a lot of things. And, and um, I've never done a project since that was like that. I, I haven't worked with any podcasts or radio stuff. And um, I just remember being, that being very, very satisfying and very, um, a very nice outlet to engage with the text and with the, I mean, with, with the talks of Abdul Baha and, and the stories around it was very, very nice. Um, yeah. I would just say like, I, I had no idea what was possible until like hearing that first episode and being like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> and then really being like, oh, okay, like you can make it sound like there are people walking and like you open the door and you're like, whoa. So, um, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, it's so nice to have someone who can just like make your imagination come to life. Uh, and yeah, it's, it was incredible. Yeah, and then just also thinking about how cool it was um, finding volunteers to read, you know, the, the main talks and to do the discussions and like, yeah, just keeping all of that stuff together, like on top of your service, on top of, you know, the service of your service. And so it was, it was, it was busy. It was a really busy time. And like, I, I mean, we would just meet at lunch sometimes to record. And then there was just the logistics of maybe someone's playing the piano. And so then you have to figure out like, you know, can you guys just wait a few minutes? And it's just like all of this stuff, but it really just like all came together. And it was just, yeah, like, it was so communal and like um, the enthusiasm of the friends who wanted to volunteer, even with their trepidation, it was still like, I don't know, it was still really, really beautiful. Yeah, I guess there were a lot of people involved. I think when you count the person who read the talk um, and maybe the dramatic portions and then there was the discussion and then the kind of the sister side to the podcast was the website. Um, and people were contributing articles. There were, there were a lot, there was a lot of people involved. Do you remember any, anyone in particular, or any comments that people made about um, their reactions? It's funny, uh, in years, in years like after, like being in, in service just back home, I, I, I'll just share this one story of like, uh, I was serving Oklahoma. So I'd go to Oklahoma and I'd stay with some of the friends there. And um, uh, Tarane was like, uh, Lorraine, you know, I wrote for the Journey West, right? And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, I corresponded with you. It was like two people became one. Uh, and because like you said, there was these different parts happening and people uh, around the world were like, I love this, can I contribute? So they would start writing. So it was a weird like two worlds colliding at that point, but it was just, and other people would be like, hey, I, I still listen to that in the car, like really appreciate it. Um, a really sweet one, and I, I, I know you guys all remember as well, like in the first episode, um, uh, John Pilgrim reads uh, 
the the talk from the preacher and you know um his wife reached out because he he passed away and he she just said how appreciative she was of being able to share this with her daughters and like he was an incredible person but i think um yeah like and there are just so many amazing people who contributed and <laughs> my memory isn't so great but those definitely those particular stories really stand out and that um and it's not us, it's, it's Abdul Baha and being able to, to channel something that is worthy of him. And uh, yeah, so it, it's just nice to know that something is living on beyond, uh, beyond our own creativity. I just wanted to say to Lorraine's um, point and to her credit, I think the, the, one of the more brilliant aspects of it is that we had different readers for, for each talk. Because it could have been someone you could you she could have found one person or maybe two people um, to read it from episode to episode like our readers and that's it. But having those very different voices and styles of reading, I think, lends um, something really special to it. Because because you could you know the format from episode to episode is going to be almost the same as you as you listen to it. But you just these new voices just give you a new. Um, it's almost like a different interpretation, not, not that it is an interpretation, but different uh, feeling and different color um, to each one of those talks. And, and I think that was, um, the more I think about it, and th this was my first engagement with some quote unquote Baha'i artistic project and thinking about how communal it was and how, how important this community around it was. And, uh, and this was people, different people from different places with different accents, different, you know, everything was, and I think that gives it a really nice, um, just a nice flavor, a nice color to, to the whole project. Um, that it does, it repeats, but it doesn't repeat from episode to episode, I think. Yeah, and I think that was a stroke of genius of, of, of Lorraine and Mary's in, in kind of being like, yeah, let's do, let's do it that way. Yeah, and I just, I, I remember specifically Diane Nayani um and her husband Christian like I just remember her enthusiasm and like because honestly there were moments where I would be tired you know like I would like I would be tired and then you would get like this email or someone would find you at lunch and like maybe we had to like cancel recording that week and I remember she was like I really want to do this and she's like you don't forget me and I was like I won't I won't and it was just like this really I don't know like like you, you can see how the Holy Spirit is like moving through all of us. And like, we are, we are communal and it is communal. And you see how like um, the Baha'is in Europe, like also really wanted this and also really benefited from, you know, um, having Abdul Baha's travels through Europe, part of this um, project as well. So yeah, I, I just wanted to add that a little bit. I remember um, Lorraine, you had asked me to help out with, with the articles and I, I started doing that and then my service ended and I left the World Center. And it's funny because I spent a lot of time very materialistically thinking about like souvenirs to take home and uh, you know things like that, how I wanted to spend my last days in Haifa. And what I didn't realize was that taking that project with me when I left was really such a gift because it kept me kind of close to the center of the covenant in a way that I, I hadn't expected. I think at the time I really loved being immersed historically in Abdul Baha's travels and thinking about like, okay, what day is it? And where is he? And who is he speaking to? And what are the experiences? But since a time has passed, I'm realizing maybe I, I got lost and I, um, I fell in love with the form and not the substance because really what's, immortal or what are those words that he said? What is, what is the message that was conveyed and, and how did he open hearts? And I was just wondering what you, now that a decade has passed, what you have carried with you since doing this project, maybe what aspects of the project affected you? You know, actually, um, I think that the, the, it's the words, but also the place. I think also following the place and kind of, so then when I like, go to Cincinnati and I like can know, oh, you know, Abdul Baha was here or wasn't far from here. And I'm there for an academic conference or whatever, but it imbues the place for me with something more 
or like in Germany, my husband's from Germany and there are a couple of places like close to where his family's from, <clears throat> excuse me, where Abdul Baha visited. And so it's like, you just go to these small places or whatever it is. And it, it's just imbued with something a little more for you. And, and for me, that's what I've carried with me. It's just like working on this project gave me a chance to be immersed and then yeah, to even just carry that cartography with me, it helps me remember Abdul Baha and this that the center of the covenant can be in all of these different places and how like unbelievably blessed we are that he was able to make these travels into into yeah, into you know, carry this to you know, all these different places in the world where we can now more or less visit freely. Um and and yeah, and just have that little um, trigger to remember um, the beauty of the covenant. Um, I just want to say one one thing that's very interesting that that happened a few years after the journey west. Um, there's a, a sort of a, I guess I don't know in my my head it's a trend, but um, internet and YouTube have enabled um, historic events to be. Um, studied or, or explained almost in real time. And there was an initiative, there's, I mean, it still exists, a YouTube channel about World War I. It started, uh, the channel started in 2014 and was following the war week by week as it was happening, almost like this, you know, they took four years to explain. And I feel like this podcast in a way was kind of ahead of the curve in that way. And, and, and since this, other, there's now a few YouTube channels that do similar things with historic events. And I think that there's something to be said about this medium. Um, the internet is, is obviously keen that, um, and to study also Baha'i history, and, and, and which is of course gonna be, you know, in, in a few hundred years, this Abdul Baha's travels are gonna be way more important than World War I. Um, and to be able to study in this way of, because we also tried to match it at least the month or the week where he was also traveling, um, to have a, a sense, because it's one thing if you read that he went through all these cities and, and the, the journey took this this long, and but in a way you're experiencing it as these episodes are coming out, um, and were at the time, and now you can co also, you know, if you listen one a week, and it, it takes some time get to the end of it for him and to think about oh this is how long it took you experience you know you kind of you're kind of in that time I don't know how to explain it you, you have the experience of, of um, at least one aspect of his journey um, different places and different um, di different times and how long it took to come back and be away and of course now you the more you think about it I mean um, and that's something I've been thinking about a bit about this whole kind of studying the, the, the historic events in, in almost real time. I think that was a very nice aspect of this podcast. Um, I think like you, Sanjel, uh, the impact was like how close I felt to Abdul Baha, uh, especially during it. And I, I don't, maybe never again since it, but <laughs> hopefully again in my life. But uh like Mary like I was I, while we were making the podcast, there was I had gone to London for like a holiday. And I had a dream about him. And I just like you, like in my dream, I was like at a banquet, one of those banquets that he went to. I felt like I was like transported in time. And I was telling the person next to me, I was like, oh, Abdul is here and he's going to be here next. And da, da, da. I just remember him laughing. He's like, what are you doing? Like, why are you talking about my life? Like you're like, you have no idea where you're going in your life. And I was like, not like I didn't know where I was going, but like maybe I was going somewhere cool and he knew that and whatever. But um, it was just funny Abdul Baha laughing at you and your dreams, but, uh, and just being pleased. I feel like he was pleased, but um, just like, yeah, it just felt so incredibly close. And I feel like, you know, this year is also that kind of opportunity to just really immerse ourselves in his story again. And like, his personality and 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 just really draw from what he shared with the world. But uh, I'm really looking forward to that with this this year. And um, I think I feel like everyone is really trying to do that uh, is draw from his life and 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 reconnect in a way that you know 
uh, I hope to, I, I would say it was a really special time and really impactful and, and for me in that way, just to like, oh, that's how close I can feel to him. Um, so, yeah. I think that's a, that's a great, that, that, that was my follow-up question is whether there's anything that you were doing, whether big or small in terms of uh, drawing yourself closer to Abdu'l-Baha in this year. I, I'll just speak for myself. I know that now <laughs> since the Journey West, I've had three children. <laughs> so my, my focus has kind of changed, but we, I've been trying to play or read stories of Abdu'l-Baha to them. And because of their young ages, it's kind of paring things down to a simple story. But I remember my oldest was really touched by the story of Abdu'l-Baha giving his bed away about how he saw uh, when he was in Aga, he saw someone who was sick, who was feverish on the ground and he gave his bed away and didn't have a bed to sleep on and that it would take a day to order a new bed from Haifa. And this had a huge impact on my oldest, like the idea of giving your bed away. And then shortly after that, we, were, we had the privilege of visiting the shrine in Montreal, the home that Abdu'l-Baha visited. And I was like, and this is Abdu'l-Baha's room and this is the bed that he slept on. And she was like, you told me he gave his bed away. Like how, <laughs> I feel like we're slowly working our way through these stories and having a deeper understanding of, of what these spiritual concepts are. But is there anything that you're reading or doing or, or thinking about in this year? I've been reading, I mean, it's kind of connected to him, uh, reading Journey to a Mountain and the, 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 the Coronation of the Mountain, whatever the name of the second book is. And that, that's a, in and of itself, a different historic story a little bit, but um, the story of how the, the shrine of the mob, the Abdul Baha came, came to be. And, and um, yeah, that, that was interesting in last year. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that question has been like, oh, wait, we should be doing something. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we read story in every gathering. We, we recognize the significance of this year and like what's coming. And obviously, like uh, following the construction of his shrine, which I never thought would be in my lifetime. I don't know why, but I'm like, there's no way that I'm ever going to have that. Like when I, but so, so that's just like, I don't know. I, I think it, you know, we're talking about history and how, I think that perspective, like Abdul Baha is going to be in his final resting place. And I just remember the story of when he placed the Bob in his final resting place and like cried while, while he put him in there. And like, as a collective, like the world is going to get this, this incredible gift. Um, so it's really nice to, to follow that and to be able to contribute to the fund for that. And um, that's, that's really special. I made sure to do that. I was like, oh, well, I have to do this. Um, and that, but I think, uh, I don't know, in terms of projects, you know, I'm hoping to do some, some more tangible things that uh, like create and design some things that people can use when they visit friends, like, and share prayers, like prayer cards, and um, just thinking really practical about how we can, you know, expand our community building efforts. So just like really practical things. And I I've heard people use the podcast and book eight and things like that. So I really appreciate that it's not just theoretical and, and really trying to um, be practical, but I think that that's probably my next project is to create some different things that people can use in community building efforts. Yeah, and um, I was looking for the prayer, but actually, you know, I think um, for me recently, I've been doing a meditation each morning where I, where I use the tablet of visitation for Abdul Baha because um, yeah, just very personally, like um, I have a therapist and she told me that like, I need to like sit for like 10 minutes every day. She's a Baha'i and she's like, and you just need to feel God's love. Mm -hmm. She's like, you need to fill your cup and you just need to sit and feel love. And she was saying like, um, you know, that Abdul Baha is very tender with me. And so like going back to that tablet of visitation and yeah, like visualizing myself at the shrine. Um, and then also being so blessed to be able to use the words of Abdul Baha and Baha'u'llah in my dissertation and to have his name as the first name, you know, on my work cited list is just, and in my bibliography, I just felt so happy, like, 
because if anyone just looks at the list, the first name they'll see is Abdul Baha and the metaphors um, really guided me in my project. And so I think, yeah, thinking about this second centenary in our lifetime um, and the significance of like the shrine going to be completed and God willing, you know, we'll all visit it um, and, and be blessed with that experience as well. Um, I think those are the things, it's just like keeping my faith grounded in my scholarship has, has been really important to me. And like, and not just theoretically, like literally directly where I'm like, this is where I got this idea or this quote is what's inspiring me. And it's what's pushing this project and pushing me. So I think I'll just keep that. And yeah, like with my students, bringing it into the classroom, into my college classrooms is always, um, it's always a special, I'm always a little nervous, but it's always like a really special um, moment for me. I would just like to say, I mean, this, this year is tremendous on so many levels, isn't it? And um, one thing that's, I think also very exciting coming up this year is, um, and which is also something I, I think when we were making the podcast wasn't uh, something I th ever thought would be that way, but the House of Justice um, or the World Center producing the films that they are to mark centenaries is a very interesting use of, of historic events and, and kind of using that as, as a platform to talk about that time, but also talk about what's happening now. How, you know, where are we? this year and, and I mean the the um the house is very openly saying that they're going to produce two films this year and, and they're going to be about uh life of Abdul Baha and about the the century of light and I think uh this historic perspective this year will come will be greatly felt I feel um I mean for us here in Croatia I have to be you know brag a little bit but we're electing our first national assembly next week and, and that's tremendous. And, and to, to coincide with this time period is really something very special. And I think we're all here in the community feeling it. It's really, really exciting. Even though the world's, you know, completely crazy and, and things are <laughs> so uncertain and, and, and um, so much different than it was 10 years ago. <laughs> I think it's, it's also a great blessing to be where we are now and, and, and to have the vantage point we do have. I am so grateful to all of you for coming together despite our various time zones and family commitments. And before I let you go back to your busy lives, I just wanna make sure, is there anything I haven't asked? Anything, any final words you wish to share? Can I just sing a prayer for us? Yes, that would be lovely. Okay. O oh, son of man, I love thy creation. Hence I created thee. Wherefore do thou love me that I may name thy name and fill thy soul with the spirit of life. O son of man, I love thy creation. Hence I created thee, wherefore do thou love me, that I may name thy name and fill thy soul with the spirit of life.
Thank you so much, Mary. And thank you, thank you, Sanjel. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for yeah. bringing us together. And um, we hope people enjoy the podcast. Yeah, and absolutely. Thank you so much, Sanjel. This was beautiful. Thank you.